Hey, what's up guys? I wanted to share a quick way that you can farm some exotic helmets in Beyond Light. So if you didn't already know, there's certain lost sectors every day that become harder difficulties and you can solo these to get exotics. Today, for example, there's this one on the Forgotten Shore on the Cosmodrome that can give you an exotic helmet if you beat it at 1280. The thing is you can't select the difficulty. Sometimes it'll be 1250, sometimes it'll be 1280. So you're kind of just stuck with whatever it is for the day. So I've been using this lost sector to farm the Mask of Bacchus helmet, which is one of the new best hunter helmets in the game, and I found it to be a pretty effective farming method. So I just wanted to quickly show you my strat for how I've been doing this lost sector pretty quickly, typically under 4 minutes, and maybe it'll help you out for farming these helmets. So quickly, I'll show you the build that I've been using and how you can copy it, and then I'll go through and show you a run and kind of give you a commentary on how I approached it. So let's get started. With this build, I've been using a hand cannon, SMG, and Xenophage. I was tempted at first to use the Lament Sword, which I did try at first and was able to clear it, but I found that at 1280 I was really consistently getting stopped by the Ogres and it just was a little bit too dangerous, so Xenophage was going a little bit better for me. You can use whichever hand cannon and SMG you want. I personally really like the Ikelos SMG with minor spec on it, and I like this True Prophecy, but I'm really only using it for the Unstoppable round, so it truly doesn't matter what you use here. Okay, so let's take a look at the armor. This is where things start to get a little bit more interesting. For my helmet, I'm doing double machine gun finder and high energy fire. Now the machine gun finder is nice to have, but it actually doesn't matter that much and I'll show you why in a second. For my gloves, I'm doing unstoppable hand cannon and anti-barrier submachine gun. This is actually super super important here. You theoretically could go with a different option, but I think this is probably the best setup for this out of everything that I've tried. The other thing I've considered doing is going unstoppable shotgun, but the way I'm playing this build, which you'll see in a second, I think the hand cannon works just fine. I'm also using protective light here, which is really important. When you become charged with light, it gives you a huge damage resist and it's really, really nice to stay alive. For my chest, I'm going with arc damage resist, melee damage resist, and powerful friends. Powerful friends doesn't really matter that much, but since I'm a hunter, I get my dodge back faster as long as I have the second line activated, so it's kind of nice. The real important thing here is the arc resist, which helps you against the final boss, the wizards, and the boomer knights, and then melee, which helps you against the ogres. I find both of these to be really, really nice. You also notice that I'm using the exotic Dragon Shadow. I found this to be really, really helpful for this build because it allows you to dodge and reload all of your weapons at the same time, as well as empty your weapons faster when you do empty your magazine. For my boots, I'm running double Machine Gun Scavenger and Global Reach. Machine Gun Scavenger here is really nice because you get extra bolts for every heavy brick, and it's really, really nice with Xenophage. And then Global Reach is how I'm creating those Warmind Cells, which allows me to kill all of those red bars really easily. Just keep in mind that you do need to have either an Eyeclose or a 7th Seraph weapon to create those Warmind Cells. And finally for the Cloak, this is probably the most important part. I'm using the Spoils of War and Taking Charge. Taking Charge is how I become Charged with Light to activate those other Charged with Light mods just by picking up an orb. And then Spoils of War is actually from the Seasonal Artifact that's over here in this column. The way this works is that every time you defeat a champion with your finisher, you're going to get automatic heavy ammo. It's really, really helpful for Xenophage. You'll notice in the gameplay that literally every time I have a chance to, I'm going to use my finisher to get my heavy ammo back, just to make sure that I always have Xenophage available to burn down the champions and yellow bars. Okay, so let's get into the gameplay. Okay, so the first thing to pay attention to is that this kind of like pathway of labyrinth tunnels can get a little bit confusing. If you just stay to the right the whole time, you'll be absolutely fine. Just never go left and you won't get lost. Once you get down to this big hallway here, the first thing you're going to come across is a bunch of thralls and some exploding thralls. And then you're going to have your first two champions, which are the anti-barrier one and then the unstoppable ogre. It kind of depends on where they spawn. Sometimes it's a little bit random. What I found here is that if you can just burn the Barrier Knight really fast and then finish him, you can then kind of retreat and have a second chance to take on the Unstoppable Ogre. What you want to do is take out your Unstoppable Hand Cannon, charge up that round, get the stun, and then quickly switch to your Xenophage to burn him down. But don't kill him, just leave him a little bit of health left so you can go for the finisher. There's actually one of the reasons that Dragon Shadow is so nice, because it allows you to do those really quick switches between weapons. Okay, so in the next section here, you're going to burn down this Barrier Knight. It's really, really helpful if you do happen to have your grenade up to throw a nade. I didn't have it in this example, but I'll show you a different one in just a second where it worked much better. Basically, what you want to do is to throw that Dust Guild grenade on him, 
which will freeze him. Use your Xenophage to burn down his health, and then pull out your SMG to break his anti-barrier shield whenever he starts to pop it. Leave him with just a bit of health left so you can go for the finisher and get your ammo back. The freeze here works really well because it'll actually stop his anti-barrier shield from going up, which gives you a little bit of a breather. Okay, now you're going to have a bunch of Thrall coming at you, just use your SMG to burn him down quickly. If you're lucky, you might even make a Warmind Cell that you can use to blow them all up at the same time. The next thing coming up here is your next Unstoppable Ogre. This one's pretty easy because he's basically all by himself. You want to use your Hand Cannon to stun him, and then use Xenophage to burn him down. And then usually for this guy, I would just rush him and spam my Finisher Key as soon as I got really close to him, so I get the Finisher as soon as that last little tick of damage went in. Next up is going to be the Wizard. I find it worth it to just burn her down with Xenophage really quickly. She can cause some issues if you don't take care of her, and she has that solar shield, so Xenophage is really nice. Okay, next is going to be all the adds that spawn in the boss room. Usually here I would just use my throwing stars or use my SMG to burn them all down. They're really not much of a threat. And if you're lucky again, you might make a Warmind Cell that you can blow them all up at the same time. Okay, now we have our last two unstoppable ogres of this lost sector. What I found here, the best thing to do is to start to damage them, but then try to bait them back into that hallway so you can take them on one at a time. It's a little bit tricky if they stay together because you need to try to stun both of them back to back. And it is easier if you can kind of get them to come one at a time. Also, don't be too worried if they kill you here because usually they'll follow you down that hallway. It'll make it pretty easy to finish them off. Okay, now we're on to the final part, which is the actual boss. He's really not too bad. Usually I would save my super for this part so I could kind of freeze him and also do some damage to him. And then I'd just burn him with Xeno as fast as I could. Even if I took a death here, it's really not that big of a deal because a lot of times my super would end up finishing him off anyway. And even if not, you could usually just kill him and then you're able to go grab the chest right away. You don't need to kill the rest of the adds in the room. And there you have it, there's your 1280 Lost Sector done. I was finding it pretty easy to do under 4 minute runs consistently once I got the strat done. The main thing is just to be patient and take it one section at a time. Hopefully you get lucky and get some good exotic helmets, let me know in the comments what you end up finding. I'll probably be doing this one for quite a while because I definitely want to get a god roll on that Mask of Bakras. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. I don't normally do a lot of PvE content like this, but I think I might try to get more into it. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it, and also subscribe so you don't miss my next videos. That's all for now, catch you guys next time.